Good afternoon, and welcome to the City Club of Cleveland. We are having a debate in this country about health care reform. New terms like single payer, payer system, public option, government control of health care, death panels, pre existing conditions, employer sponsored plans are no longer just the topics for the pharmaceutical industry, the health care industry, insurance companies, lobbyists, and legislators. These are things we are all hearing about and all talking about. And there's no place better to have a discussion about health care reform than right here at the City Club of Cleveland. My name is Jan Roller, and I am president of the club. The various interest groups on health care reform are spending millions and millions of dollars to shape public opinion. The final bill has not yet been written, and there are many competing proposals. The proposed reforms are complex. And this complexity is causing a lack of clarity and misunderstanding by citizens across the country. The confusion and a fear of change has caused rancorous and bitter confrontations at town hall meetings. It has also struck an ugly and at times hateful chord among some people, resulting in a suppression of free speech and eliminating an open, helpful dialogue on the topic. When a friend of mine heard that the City Club is sponsoring a forum on health care reform today, he said, keep ringing that bell of hope, meaning the gong that we ring to open each City Club forum. I thought that said it best, that here at the City Club, we hope that an open, cordial discussion with opportunities for questions from everyone will help dispel the confusion and promote a clearer understanding of the important topic of health care reform. Here to introduce our speakers is our moderator for today's panel, Dan Molthrop of WCPN IdeaStream. Please welcome Dan Molthrop. Thanks, Jan. <laughs> Thank you very much, Jan, and thanks all of you for joining us here at the City Club of Cleveland. Thanks also to our audience on WCPN and also on WVIZ. It's a real pleasure to be here and um, to tackle with these two fine congressmen a, 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 an issue of really such importance. And, and because it's so important, I'm not going to waste a whole lot of time saying things that you already know about this debate and about these issues and just get right to introducing our, our guests today. Congressman uh, John Bocceri won election to the 16th Congressional District just last November, so it's uh, my first opportunity to congratulate him. Um, he's a major in the U.S. Air Force Reserve, served in Iraq and Afghanistan, and before, uh, before heading to Washington, he served eight years in the Ohio legislature. It's great to have you here, sir. Thank you. And also with us, Congressman Tim Ryan, the 17th Congressional District. He has represented that district since 2003. He serves on the very important House Appropriations Committee, and he previously also served in the Ohio State Legislature. These are the kind of guys, by the way, um, you add up their ages, and they make maybe less than Ralph Regula. And they're the kind of guys, they're the kind of guys who, who, when you realize how young they are, they make you feel like a serious underachiever. But please give them a round of applause. <laughs> Um, so they, they each have about a few minutes to just lay out some of the, some of the terrain of where we're going to be talking about today. And, uh, and then I'll have a few questions for them. And then, of course, in the second half of our program, we'll open it up to questions from you. But Congressman Ryan, go ahead. Well, I appreciate it. And uh, first, let me say it takes two of us to meet the standard of Ralph Regula. And I think <laughs> John and I would both agree to that. Uh, Ralph was a wonderful member and uh, a, a global member, um, took care of the whole state um, with his uh, position on appropriations. Um, I think it's important for all of us to you know, as we have this debate and we see what's happened this summer, is to try to put this into some context as to what the discussion has actually been like and maybe why it's been this way. And I'm not a particularly partisan person, but I think it's important as we hear the discussion to recognize that there was a Republican memo that came out very early on by Frank Luntz that said, you cannot let President Obama pass health care reform. You must do everything you can to, to, to prevent this from happening. And then you had a senator, Republican senator, say that this needs to be Barack Obama's Waterloo. That is not exactly the way to start an important discussion about very important issues that are facing the country. I think in 2009, when you look at the trajectory of health care spending in our country, 
Healthcare spending is growing at 9%. The GDP is growing at 3%. So over the course of the next decade, one in every five dollars will be spent on healthcare. Over the course of the next 30 years, one of every three dollars will be spent on healthcare. That is an unsustainable position for our country to be in. And for us not to have the maturity and the recognition that this is a, an American issue, not a Democrat or Republican issue, and we can argue about the substance of how we get there, but I think it is so irresponsible to start this very important debate that way um, because the average American family and the ama average American business, and we'll get into all the details um, of why we need to do this, but if we do absolutely nothing, the average family of four will have an $1,800 uh, increase in their health care bill next year. And then it's not over. It'll be eighteen or 2000 the next year. It'll be 1800 or 2000 the following year. To, to the point where it's eating up the entire family budget. You can't invest in education. You can't invest in your home. You can't invest in anything else that you deem important. Same with small businesses. It's strangling small businesses. So as we begin this discussion, I think it's important for everyone to remember uh, where I think most Republicans are coming to the debate and what their attitude is coming to the debate is. And it's important for us to recognize that, you know, it maybe at some point if they don't want to uh, play in a fair manner and negotiate in good faith that it may have to be the Democrats that have to pass this thing. It's worth mentioning when you say that, Congressman Ryan, that we invited, the City Club invited uh, just about every Republican member of the Ohio delegation to this forum and they all declined our invitation. So no, You make my um, point. Well, I'm just <laughs> putting it out there. It's a, it's a matter of fact. Yeah. Congressman Bocheri. Thank you. It's an honor to be here at this venerable institution and uh, have the opportunity to have a robust dialogue <clears throat> excuse me, about health care and where our country is going. Uh, it's an honor to serve with Tim Ryan and have my predecessor, Ralph Regula, who uh, has big shoes to fill uh, in this congressional district, and it is just an absolute honor for a grandson of a coal miner and a carpenter to walk the, 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 uh, how, uh, the chamber of, of, of our nation's uh, government with, uh, with gentlemen like Congressman Regula and all the delegation here. So. This issue that, is, that we're grappling with right now, to echo some of the sentiments of Congressman Tim Ryan, is not a Democrat or Republican issue. It's not a conservative or liberal issue. It's a matter of America. It's in the challenges that we face here as a country. There are no two bigger issues that confront us for the long-term competitiveness of our nation than energy and health care. And <clears throat> Congressman Ryan suggested that we spend nearly 20% of our gross national product is based on health care. And they predict within the next few uh, decades that it could grow to over half of our gross national product. And that is an unsustainable future for our nation's small business, large business, and every layer of government from the most local to the most uh, federal. And we have got to do something. The cost of doing nothing, the cost of doing nothing is unsustainable. Um, I remember the words of Teddy Roosevelt. He said, the worst thing you can do in the moment of a decision is nothing, is to sit around and watch the train go by, and this is something that we have got to uniquely tackle. When we start talking about the proposals that are on the table, uh, these are ideas that we have come up with. These are ideas of proposals that we have uh, generated over a serious debate about where our nation's health and the viability of our nation long term uh, is projected. When you think about this, that we spend more than any industrialized nation in the world on health care, yet our life expectancy is on par with Cuba, there's no question that there's room for improvement. And uh, I can tell you that uh, this debate should start off as a collegial discussion about how we progress and not to what it has erupted uh, to in the, in the political spectrum. Uh, one thing to add, you know, folks out there who may be opposed to, to health care in, in terms of the expansion, the reforms that we're trying to undertake right now, think about this. When I was flying missions over in Iraq and Afghanistan, in 2004, our Secretary of Health and Human Services, Tommy Thompson, flew to Iraq with one of many billion dollar checks in hand to make sure that every man, woman, and child in Iraq had universal health care coverage. 